did you decide to come up with an idea for this season and how did it sort of develop from the end of last season into what some of us saw a couple of minutes ago? Um, you know, it's sort of the same way it always comes up, which is as we're wrapping up at the end of the year and we sit in the room with everybody and kind of talk about things we haven't done yet, things we want to do, and as well as sort of the natural progression of what we have to next. So, um, I think we said at the panel that every season for us, when we get a pickup, is pretty much a surprise. And we thought, you know, approaching in our fifth season, approaching the hundredth episode, we thought for sure we were closing it out. We kind of approached the end of season five like that. We felt like we gave everyone a nice arc and ending. And then also, Paulson, you know, spending his last days with May. So we thought, how do we? go into season six with something totally different. And, and I, I don't know if you saw the first episode, but it's different. <laughs> Basically, you know, we, we are now shooting season seven, and so season six, and we were in the middle of it, and we realized we were close to the end, and we thought that's always how it works, is to get to about 13, we feel like we're halfway through, but that was it. So, um, we really thought of it as two seasons and not dividing one, and, and so, uh, you know, it allowed us to accelerate the story a little bit, and a little bit faster, and, uh, uh, you know, we do the same thing with season seven that we do with six, which is trying to find new ground to cover, <coughs> new places for our characters to go. So, you know, it's not rocket science, but we try to challenge it. So what process do you find out when you're shooting six that you only have a season seven, so that influences where you're going to take the rest of season six? Um, we knew. We knew going into season six that was a Seven. Yeah. And how many episodes of seven? So we, so uh, you know, there's certain seasons where you can tell it's a total cliffhanger. And, you know, we're intentionally. For the first, yeah, for the first five seasons with 22 episodes, we kind of broke up each season into pods anyway. That's what we call them. So essentially, the 13 episode order is doing. Did you know in writing this premiere episode that we just saw that Clark was going to direct it? We knew we always wanted him to direct, and, and he did uh, in season five, right? So we yeah, yeah we, he directed one. We episode. knew writing it that it was going to be him, and uh, you know it's fun watching him direct the actors because they all work with him all the time. It's, it's a whole different ball game when you're telling a person what to do, especially when you've worked with him as an actor. Many years, um, but there's a good shorthand there because of that. And they all, you know, everybody knows each other really well right now. So uh, he did a great job. You know, he's great. Job. What did you find difficult about season five? Um, I know for me, it was a little hard. It was it, it was sometimes difficult to kind of take each of those different arcs and kind of move forward. And they all had they all got progressively kind of darker and darker. Um, is that kind of darkness going to continue into six and seven, or is it? Or did we flip a script when we came out of that? You know, we try to do both. Our goal was always to do some wish fulfillment. And and to reward the audience for sticking with us. I would say that the darkness comes out of sort of necessity for character and for that bittersweet thing that we love, which is mixing the happy and the sad. Uh, it's that way, like the moments of levity and all that more passion. But I do think, like, we find humor in darkness as well. So, like, there's a little bit of everything going on. <laughs> There's a general question that the Marvel Universe I grew up reading is expansive. Sometimes if, if you know, J. Jonah Jameson would sneeze, Matt Murdock would say, God bless you, like, it was a connectivity. You'd buy and you felt you were tra watching a whole universe. What are you allowed to introduce from other aspects of the Marvel Universe to make fans go wild? I, I imagine there are restrictions, but... 
I kind of fell out of my chair the other year when Superman got Superman. I mean, they were not invested in that character in the movies, but they still put him on TV. What can you bring onto the TV show, and what from that universe would you love to bring on if you could? Um, well, there are rules. And, you know, and there, are there are restrictions. There are restrictions. The, yeah. the main difference between the DC universe and the Marvel universe is that we don't. We only have one Iron Man, and, we do, and it is one universe. Um, so, you know, early on we did some of that. We certainly set out for our show to exist on its own, and not. But I think that we try to exist the way that you know you can you can watch an Ant Man movie and enjoy it without wondering where Spider Man is. And so <clears throat> we tried to stand on our own, A, because it has to, to be its own property, but also because of the restrictions. And that being said, um, you know, we are in constant contact with features and we try to, we have a different lead time than that. We start writing and we finish shooting in the time that it takes them to make it. Like, they're years out. So... You know, we have to make sure that we're not covering stories that they are going to cover and something that they're shooting now. And so there's a lot of rules like that in play. In terms of what we'd love to bring on, any of them. I mean, yeah. all, any, any, specifics, any specifics that you read over the years is Hellcat, Moon Dragon, Garbo, is it just a few defenders? Yeah, there's a lot of different, I will say that there's a lot of rules in place. And so we, we have a big sandbox to play in. But it is, you know, there is a limited amount and of... And there's a reason there. why we've, you know, developed our mythology. Yeah. Yeah.